Hey everybody, it's time for 10 of 10, really it's your shady, talking to a friend, she asked him 10 questions, they gave her 10 replies, hopefully you learn how Casey really thrives, the purpose of the session is to make Casey connections, 10 of 10, 10, 10. We're recording! Woo! Hey Kara. Oh, hey Sadie. Welcome to this impromptu show, not show. Show, not a show. Yes! I feel like a visitor on a podcast right now. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we should <laughs> work on our waves. Anyway, you're Kara. Tell me about you, Kara. Um, okay, so I paint things. Pretty much anything anyone will pay, pay me to paint, I paint. Um, my preferences is theater. I love painting for opera, drops. Um, I like goopy, dramatic, ridiculous stuff. The bigger and more ridiculous, the better. Um, so when I'm not in the theater world, I like to paint murals, bedrooms, um, warehouses, walls of literally any building. Um, so yeah, I mostly just really like to paint things. And I'm currently the charge artist at the rep and I love it. So before this, I was down in Houston for a while. And before that, I was out in North Carolina. I grew up in Kansas though. So I'm kind of back home. So that's the short version of Kara. So Welcome, welcome home. Thanks. So here are your questions. <laughs> okay. Question number one. What is the weirdest thing you've ever painted? A whale's uvula. Oh my gosh. Was it like life size? We, it, was, it was beyond life size. It was for my son Pinocchio. So like we UV the drop. So like the drop was the whale's like, what's the part of your throat that's not a uvula? Like the, the swallowy part was the full 60 foot drop. And then we painted a giant uvula that just hung there. <laughs> And spraying the bottom of it was super weird, and I got it. It was it was as weird as you would think that would be. Yeah, that is definitely weird. <laughs> awesome. Number two, how did you become a painter, and when did you first realize that it was going to be your career? So I first painted something big. I painted a mural at the football field on the press box my senior year of high school and it was super fun. So then I was at a very small school and we didn't have theater until that year basically and so we built a set for the first time in well over a decade. We had a backdrop and I then because I painted a mural obviously I could paint a backdrop and so I did that and then when I got to college I embellished my carpentry skills enough that I got a job a work study job in the scene shop and we managed to get everything built but then no one else wanted to paint because paint is like smelly and gross and like gets everywhere and I was like oh my gosh guys I'm such a good painter I painted all the time in high school <laughs> I think it's really fun I can do this plus it's like way less awful than building things and so I started painting painting and by the end of my freshman year I was like this is really cool I still didn't quite realize that it could actually be a career it took me another like few months before I was like whoa I can I can do this so then my senior year I got to my first professional job was in Wichita at the crown I my first mentor got me a job there so I got to drive over and paint white Christmas the crown and then after that I was like this is, this is what I'm doing with my life. I'm not going to be a teacher. I got this. So. <laughs> my yep. path, my path chose me. I did yes. not choose the path. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number three, this one's a little harder. Okay. What, what is a piece of art that most people probably don't know about, but we should know about it and why? And if not piece of art, it can also be an artist. Oh, oh my gosh. This, I'm going to give you a terrible answer because I, I cannot for the life of me ever remember this artist's name. So you all will have to use Google to figure this out. And we'll it's Google like a little it. treasure hunt. There is a muralist who does all of their work in charcoal, like sides of elevators, full building walls, like brick walls in charcoal. And so it eventually just like years later, sometimes more, sometimes less, it all just washes away and they do portraits. 
And so they're these really incredible, like very lifelike, very realistic black and white portraits of people. And then they just slowly like get washed away. And it's, I just love it so much because they're big and they're dirty and they're imperfect, but they're just so realistic. And then like humans, they just kind of slowly start to weather away, but they're gorgeous still after they've gone through years of getting all beat up and raggedy and weather and beaten and they're still beautiful and they still have this incredible story and I just love them so much. So interesting. It's like becoming part of the earth again. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that hippy dippy. Oh yeah. Origin oh, yeah. story oh, yes. of art. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Number four, who inspires you? Okay. I didn't say these questions would be easy when we started. I know you didn't. Oh, and this was such a quick left turn from artists. Um, let me think. Okay, the super, this is gonna sound a little bit cliche probably, but of course the first person who popped into my head was my dad. Um, my dad was a theater major who was, went to school on a football scholarship. And so when I was a little kid, I would like hang out at football practice and play practice. And then like also in his English classroom. And so just this incredible, he's, he's worked in education his whole life. And he's just one of those people who every single one of the students who walked through the door, no matter how horrible and how obnoxious they were, he really and truly like looked for the best in that kid and loves every kid he's ever encountered, even the ones that he wants to hit on the back of the head. And so just growing up with that, that love of people and love of people's stories, and also just the embracing, he's, like I said, he was a football coach who married a musician who directed shows. And so my whole life, he, I've just always been surrounded by literally everything. And whether I was out playing baseball or sewing doll clothes, they were all like super embraced and loved and supported and just he's so stinking good at that and so yeah I guess that would be that would be my answer is my dad so yeah he, he's very much the oh my gosh my daughter is obnoxiously independent and just basically <laughs> ran away from home because she decided she wanted to go do this well I can't be mad at her because that's really cool but also like can you let me know next time but <laughs> So he's been super supportive of everyone, especially me, my whole life and all of the ridiculous ideas that I've ever had. He's helped me move across the country more times than I care to think about. So <laughs> I want to think about in mileage or in gas. Yeah, no, sorry about that. Love you, dad. Uh <laughs> okay, number five. What makes you currently stay in Kansas City to do your art? I have absolutely fallen in love with the rep. Um, initially what brought me to Kansas City was like I, my family's all in Kansas so my nephew is an hour away and he, he's really cute and just turned three um, and it's fun to be kind of back home but I got here and as obnoxious and ridiculous as those people who I work with are I love <laughs> them and I they have for some reason just embraced the loud ridiculousness that is me and I feel like I finally have a place where it's not just like Oh yes, Kara. She's she's Kara. Like it's like no, she's Kara, and <laughs> we, we don't get her, but it works, and we love her for it. Like I just I feel like I've finally found a group of people whose crazy and ridiculousness is equal to mine, and it, we're all just it's really fun. I just love them so. Yeah, I think that's like the greatest part about Kansas City is just a whole is like we're all this one really creepy integrated artistic family uh -huh. who, like you'll fight with your siblings uh -huh. and you always have that one weird uncle and, like, yeah. there's, like, like, there's yeah. like you know you've got um people who will bring you treats and things like that it's like the best family ever yes. but you could also strangle them at any moment yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right, number six. 
What feeling do you get when you see a piece of your art on stage? Okay, I instantly get two feelings. Um, the first one is, oh, yes, it worked. <laughs> and then, like, that's immediately, and, like, they get that. They can have it. I gave it to the people, and they can make beautiful art because I gave them the thing that they needed. And then that's instantly followed by me sitting there for the remainder of the show staring at the three things that I did wrong or wish that I had done better. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I think it's that when I call a show, too. It's like, I'm calling the show, and I call a cue, and I'm like, mm, yeah, but that wasn't it. That wasn't yeah. it. Yeah, that wasn't, nope, nope. But at the same time, there are times where I'm like, wow, this is just like the most beautiful thing. Yes! And the weird thing about stage managing is like, we don't make the art. Yeah. We facilitate your art. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like we're a little bit of imposters because we're taking credit for like everyone's beautiful art. But like, at the same time, it's so collaborative that like, it you is. have to kind of own it together. Exactly. Well, and that's the best part about theater is because like it literally can't happen without all of the different people like I don't pick what anything on that stage looks like I just bring somebody else's ideas to life so that other people's ideas can also be brought to life through the magic of you telling them when to do what like it's yeah it's I love it yeah. it's really interesting to me I think a lot of people don't understand that a scenic charge artist or a scenic painter it's you're not the person that actually made no. those choices to design no. it. You're you're just um, you're executing uh -huh. the the design that someone else made, and that in turn can I think sometimes be harder with yeah. that execution. It's it's interesting because I do that sometimes. I feel like an imposter when people are like, "So what do you do?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm a painter." Because nobody knows what a charge artist is. Oh, I'm a painter. Oh, you're an artist. I'm like, I mean. Yes, but like I'm more of a craftsman -y person because I kind of feel like a poser if I say I'm an artist because I'm not the one making the things up. I'm just the one like problem solving to make the things that have been made big. Like I, I, don't, right. I, don't, I don't art, I just make. Like <laughs> <laughs> It's like if I say, Kara, paint this blue, you're yes. going to ask all the questions that you what blue would you like, Sadie? To make sure that I get the right blue. How yep. shiny would you like your blue? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, number seven. What was the most memorable piece of theater or art or or anything performance related um, or music related that you've seen in Kansas City? Um. Probably, um, wow, this is awkward because now I can't think of the name. What's the one that we did right before we got, oh, wait, just kidding. I remembered another one. Okay, I was about to say that one with the wallpaper that is based off a graphic novel that we painted and it's on the Revolve and it's red and it's blue and it's green and we did it in Spencer. And what is the name of that show? Oh, noise is off. No, 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 before noises didn't oh. happen. Fun home. Okay, I was about to say fun home because like it was just it it just everything came together so well and like I just I thought that that show was great and I love watching anything Lisa directs. Um, but then I remembered Frankenstein, which I had kind of forgotten about because that happened and then I went home and started drinking uh, because we all got sent home. But I loved the Ghost of Frankenstein. Like it was. I don't usually like it. It was. I loved it. It had music, which I, I love music, and it was just the two people, and they were perfect, and it was small, and it was intimate, and I think it was just what I needed at that moment as we were all kind of getting sent home, and that story was exactly what I needed to hear in that moment as everything was kind of falling apart, um, and so I'm going to go with Frankenstein, although I did love that, so. Awesome. But I also haven't been here very long, so I haven't got to see a whole lot outside of the rep world. Well, so, they keep yeah. you busy over there, so I can yeah. it. So. Okay, number eight. What is your favorite color and how do you mix it? Ooh, my favorite color is dead orange. Like, think leaves. Actually, kind of like this color right here, depending on how good your computer screen is. Yeah. Um, and so, <laughs> yes, so it would be mixed with orange and then probably like, probably I would start with orange, like the off-Broadway orange, and then dump in a scotch of blue, which is its complement, which grays out, so that would kill it just 
just a little bit. So wait, kind so of you a, take the blue and the orange? Yeah, it grays it out a little bit, so it's not quite so like bright and vibrant. Because if you put black in something, it just kills it and it's ugly. But yeah, if you put something's complement in with that something it will gray it out a little bit. So like if you go to Sherwin-Williams and you're like, ooh, I want gray walls in my house, and you get home and you're like, oh, these are so purple, what have I done? Take your bucket of paint back to Sherwin-Williams and have them dump some yellow in there and it'll like kill the purple and you'll have the beautiful gray walls that your heart desires. Oh my gosh, see, this is why we do, this is why, we do. This is why I ask these questions because yeah. They're obscure questions that probably everybody wanted to ask you, but it's didn't. true. Did so, nope. <laughs> okay, number nine. You're almost there. What are you deeply grateful for right now? Um, my dog. Um, my dog is amazing. I've had her since I left Kansas the first time, so she's been a living creature that's been in my house for the past five months um and I've also been blessed I've started to find a few like murals and freelance jobs around town just as like just when I was getting to the point where I was really starting to lose my mind and think that I was probably gonna have to like go try to be a waitress which I'm really bad at as you can probably guess um or something like that I <laughs> um I just have been super blessed by incredibly supportive people and jobs just popping up and great people at my church and just like cool volunteer opportunities that have kind of spread it up and been given to me and have just throughout this whole COVID thing, just every time I feel like I'm getting to the edge and just don't know how I'm going to anymore, something pops up and like pulls me back and says, no, yeah, it's, yeah, it sucks, but it's going to be okay, and here you go, like a sunset, or something even sometimes, just those little things that keep me from getting too far. Yeah, I think that in this time, it's like so hard, because we're so fr like frantically minded right now, just like grabbing mm -hmm. for anything that we can to fulfill our artistic souls, because we are, it's, hard for us we don't know who we are without our art art or yeah. our artistic work and for some people it's like oh well you just lost your job or you know like you'll find something else or yeah like go and work at a restaurant but when we try to explain that to i don't know what i call the civilians is yeah they don't understand that it's also like a soul piece of us that's gone you know, mm -hmm. and I think that we aren't looking right now for what is what we're grateful for because it's hard. Yeah. Um, we have to remind ourselves, like those little things that you said, like every once in a while you're doing a mural or you're finding something, like those are the things that are going to pull us through like this really crazy moment in time. And by the way, I think that you would make an amazing waitress and you can wait on me any day and I would highly tip you. Oh, thanks. You obviously never visited the Topeka Outback Steakhouse for three weeks, summer oh. of 2012. <laughs> I'll call them up. Well, we I think they're closed. We won't put their link in, in the comments. Good call. <laughs> But no, I think you're totally right. I think yes, yeah. everything you said was right. And it's it's also hard for me because so much of it is kind of like I said earlier, like I like being able to give the designers what they want and like bring their vision to life and then like give a beautiful set to the actors to be able to like give them a world. And so there's that part of me that just, I like to take care of people and I like to do things for people and I like to give and like, yes, you need that. Let me make that happen for you. And I, what everyone needs right now is for there to be a vaccine and I, you do not want me to make a vaccine for you. So yeah. <laughs> okay, the last question, you've made it, you've arrived. Number 10 is what is the best piece of advice you have received? And what is the best piece of advice you'd give to someone else? Um, okay. Do you want the, uh, I'll give you, my mom might watch this, so I'll give you the G-rated version. Uh, it's just paint. You can paint over it. 
Like, you mess it up, <laughs> make it a thing. Oh, you dropped your brush? Cool, put a brush or like a bush there. Like, make a mess up a feature. Um, and so <laughs> embrace it because it should be messy and it should be, it, that's how life is. If, if you spend too much time trying to get it perfect, it won't be recognizable and it won't be relatable because nothing in this life is perfect. Um, and so just embrace it and go with it and don't be scared. Um, and I think that's the same thing that I say that to people in class. I've said that to young painters in my shops before. I've gone out and like dumped a bucket of paint down. I'm like, oh look, I just ruined everything. So you can't now. So go at it. Like have, go, grab a great big brush and start spreading that out before it dries. Please, thank you. Like you can't mess it up and you can't be so scared to start that you never try. So just go, go, run, fly, paint. And then when you mess it up, paint over it. So. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, the floor is technically yours, but I decided to throw in a bonus question because, okay. um, because I needed to. So all of my students know this and they think it's hilarious that I love paint by number. So yes. I wanted to ask you if you think this is real or do you think it is a paint by number? I feel like I've been led that I have to say paint by number at this point. I feel like this is leading the witness. Uh <laughs> Good, yeah, because I painted by number it is. That's awesome. That's, you can paint a drop now because that's literally all painting a drop is. It's a I giant know. 30 by 60 paint by number. Yeah. I think, I think that's why, like, I, I, you know, that's my future. I think I'm just going to start painting by number. Oh, yeah, do so. it. Yeah. Okay, it. the floor is now yours, Kara. Would you okay. like to plug anything, talk about anything? What What is something that you're passionate about that we need to know? Oh my gosh, something I'm passionate about that you need to know. I feel like here's, I had a really great answer for this when you warned me that this was going to be coming and then you distracted me with 11 other questions. I know. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? It was such a good answer. Um, oh, okay. So here's something I'm passionate about and I've, I've noticed that more people are doing it and it's awesome. And I think that we need, this is something that has changed because of COVID and we need to just like go with this. I was at a coffee shop the other day and there were no computers and no cell phones. There were people talking and people reading books and somebody said hi as I walked by with my dog. And I think that this time that we're in right now is such a great time to make the, say hi to the stranger that's six feet away from you at the next table make it normal to talk to people again. Like we don't have to meet people on the internet, like make a friend in line at the coffee shop because you like the book that you're, they're reading or you overheard something that they said and you can say, oh my goodness, burnt orange is my favorite color too. <laughs> Just start talking to those people because especially those of us who are not necessarily like living with families or seeing a lot of people right now, we're just, we're craving interaction with humans. And it's, I think, especially just kind of in this, crazy world that we're in right now, the more you can connect with somebody, you may find out that you're totally different in every aspect, but that, that could be a good thing because they could learn something from you and you can learn something from them. And just little by little, little acts like that are how we're actually going to make like a change that can be sustainable for the next, you know, 100, 200 years until I die. And so I think just that's what I am passionate about is say hi to the person who's six foot away from you. And don't be scared if they look scary or if they look different than you, because they're not any of those things. You look scary and different to them. And so say hi, whether it's a farmer looking person in a pair of overalls or a crazy artist looking girl in a pair of overalls or like somebody else in a pair of overalls. Like you can also talk to people who don't wear overalls, but those, that's, that's what I'm passionate about. And then if you're super bored sometime, my website is Kara Spencer Paint. And so you can peruse painting things if you're super bored and quarantined. So, and you yeah. want to look at some beautiful things that make you yeah. happy. Yes. <laughs> You're beautiful and you make me happy. You're beautiful and you make me happy. This was so fun. I'm thanking you so much for coming yes. to the show and answering all the questions. And we'll post the links that you have um, in the chat or in, in the below or wherever we post them. Wherever it goes. Brilliant.
Thanks, Kara. Yes. <laughs>